Hi, and welcome to my Foundations of Yoga series. Today's lesson is about high lunge or crescent lunge, also known as Ashta Chandrasana. In high lunge and crescent lunge, you'll find that the two terms are often used interchange interchangeably amongst teachers. And I think that can lead to some confusion as to when this pose is cues during class, what is the teacher looking for? The key thing between high lunge and crescent lunge is when we're doing crescent lunge, we're also executing a back bend. So if you find yourself in class and they are saying crescent lunge, but maybe they don't have a back bend and they have a more upright position in the torso, just realize that your teacher may be someone that just uses the terms interchangeably. And that's just fine as long as you understand what feels best for you and your body. The back bend is completely optional. You can keep your high lunge upright at any time. Some of the benefits of high lunge and crescent lunge include stretching into the torso, the neck, the shoulders, keeping them open. Also, there's a lot of strengthening and a lot of stretching in the lower body from your ankles, the calves, all the way up into the quads and the hamstrings and the hip flexors. There's a lot of engagement in the abs and the core as you draw the core in during the posture. And if you're doing the back bend posture in crescent pose, you'll find that it's more of a heart opening posture, opening wide along the collarbone, engaging throughout there and staying strong in the upper body. You also strengthen through the shoulders and the arms, depending on your arm position, especially if you're in the traditional high lunge pose where the arms are up and alongside the ears, doing that for a long time can get pretty tiring. We'll start to set up in our high lunge pose. And first we'll talk about stance. Your stance in high lunge should be the same distance from front to back as it is in your warrior one. So a pretty good length from front to back and the feet are about hip distance apart. So they are not directly in line with each other from front to back. Let's see, I'll face the camera here. We don't want them in line with each other heel to heel. They'll be separated almost like they're on train tracks. So hip width distance apart. All right, I'll move so I don't slip on my carpet. So stepping back, I'm gonna step back with my left foot here. The back foot is far enough back so that you can keep the leg straight. So we want to stay straight in that back leg, engage through that back hamstring, keep the quad or keep the quad engaged so that we draw the back knee up and protect through the back knee. The back heel should be directly over the ball of the back foot. And then also in your stance, we isometrically engage from the back foot and thigh and draw the front foot backwards towards the back foot. So it's almost like we're trying to wrinkle the mat. We engage the core and draw the feet towards each other for a much more active and stronger posture. Now the front foot and leg. The front foot and leg is pretty simple as it's similar to our warrior one or warrior two position. You have the front knee directly over the front ankle and you're also feeling the front foot draw back as we discussed in our stance. The front knee, we're keeping it pressed outward so that it's not falling and collapsing inside of the body. As we travel further up the body, we'll talk about the hips and the pelvis. The hips are hugged into the midline to kind of provide yourself a little bit extra balance, a little bit more core stability. The tailbone should be slightly tucked and as you do so, you'll feel a stretch, especially along the front side of the hip flexor of whichever leg you have to the back. 
And also in the hips, there's no twisting in your high lunge. Both of the hips are facing forward to the top of the mat. And that's opposed to warrior one where the hip is open just slightly because of the turnout of the back foot. You'll find that in warrior one, it's necessary to have a slightly open hip on the back, uh, back leg. Now we'll travel further even up the body into the torso and the chest. And I'll lift my arms for this demonstration now. As we're in the torso and chest in a normal high lunge, we're upright. So the shoulders are directly over the hips. If we're taking the back bend in crescent, we have a small bend in the thoracic portion of the back. We're not just whipping our neck backwards and trying to look up towards the sky. This can be quite a different feel and also can be quite difficult uh, as it challenges our balance when we move our shift our gaze upward. When you're in either of those positions, your ribs should be knitted inward and also drawing them in, keeping that core all nice and tight as you're in that position. I'll switch sides here. As you hold the torso and chest upright, think of lengthening through the side waist. At the same time, again, keeping those ribs and the navel drawn in so you stay engaged in the core. Moving up to the arms and shoulders in our high lunge. With the torso upright, the arms will be right alongside the ears. You'll be active all the way to the fingertips so you're actively reaching through the arms, but careful not to scrunch the shoulders up and against the ears. We want the shoulders still to be wide and down the back so that we don't draw tension into the neck. 